next to the engines. Right. Those would be right here. And this part is called the gondola. That's where the pilot and the passengers sit. I just found this story. Have you heard of the ghost blimp? No, I don't think so. Okay, get this. Back in the 1940s, there was this U.S. Navy airship that was on a routine flight near San Francisco. There was two guys aboard, Navy pilots, and they were searching the Pacific Ocean for Japanese submarines. An hour into their flight, they radio back to the base and tell them that they've seen an oil slick along the ocean's surface. They said that they were heading in for a closer look. Now get this. A few hours later, their blimp returned. It coasted back over the beach. After running into a house and a couple of cars, the blimp finally landed. Investigators checked out the gondola to see what was going on. It was empty. The two pilots weren't in there, and there was nothing to indicate what had gone wrong. Poof, they were just gone. And nobody ever saw any of them again. It's like a total mystery. Creepy. That is weird. Yeah, I know. The gondola still exists in the Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida. Okay, so what's left up there? Looks like everything's labeled. Everything but the envelope. Yeah, right. This is it, right? Yep. Well, there we have it. It says here that the envelope is the skin of the blimp. Even though it looks metallic from a distance, it's really a polyester fabric that's coated in rubber to make it soft and flexible. I guess it's kind of like the material they use to make spacesuits. It's the part that has helium in it. It's the part that's inflated. Right. That's got me thinking. Now that we're on the topic of the envelope, I wonder how they paint it. Huh? Well, look at this picture. I mean, do you think they paint the blimp when it's inflated or when it's deflated? You got me, but it must take a heck of a lot of paint. Yeah, I'm sure. I wonder how they calculate that. I wonder how they know how much paint it takes to cover the entire envelope. Well, what's on our schedule today? We're talking with that engineer, right? Yeah, I bet he could figure it out. Do you want to head over there now? Yeah, let's go. We're here at Lockheed Martin's regional base in Akron, Ohio. Lockheed Martin is an aeronautics company that builds everything from missiles to military planes to satellites and other spacecraft. In addition, Lockheed Martin has built non-rigid airships, or blimps, for the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company since 1928. Today we'll be talking with Dr. Gordon Schmidt to find out a little bit more about the construction of blimps. So, Dr. Schmidt. Why is it important to know the surface area of the blimp? Well, there's really two reasons. First of all is weight. This is an example of the actual fabric that's used on a blimp. You know, feel it. It's really light. It only weighs about two ounces. But consider that it would take 31,000 pieces this size to cover the blimp. That's a lot of ounces, and it works out to something like 3,000 pounds. So weight is a really important thing. Uh, the second reason is drag. When the airship is flying, uh, skin friction builds up between the surface of the envelope and the air flowing around it. And that skin friction uh, contributes to the drag. How do you calculate the surface area of the blimp? Well, here's a sketch of the envelope itself. We could go ahead and approximate that complex shape with a much simpler shape, one that's made of a conical nose, a cylindrical midbody, and a conical afterbody. There are easy formulas for calculating the surface area of each one of these simple shapes. All we have to do is compute the areas and add them up and we'll get a good approximation of the envelope surface area. Once we've calculated the surface area of the envelope, we can use that information in several useful ways. One is to estimate the amount of fabric required to build the, the, the envelope. Uh, another is, in the case of the Goodyear blimp, to determine how much paint is required to cover it. Now, for the blimp, the surface area is about 21,600 square feet. That equates to about 55 gallons of paint. 
Or another way to look at it, if you have a room that's 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot, that would require about one gallon of paint. So the amount of paint needed to cover the Goodyear blimp uh, could be used to paint 55 bedrooms. How do you calculate the volume of the blimp? And it's pretty easy to calculate the volume of these three sections and then add them up and uh, the total volume is, is going to be usually within a few percent of the actual volume. What has the same volume as the blimp? Well, the Goodyear blimp has a volume of over 200,000 cubic feet. And if you uh, imagine that a typical bedroom has a volume of about 1,000 cubic feet, that means that the Goodyear blimp has the same volume as a house with 200 bedrooms in it. How do you know how much helium you need? Well, that depends on how big of a load you want to lift. A 1,000 cubic feet of pure helium can only lift about 66 pounds at ground level. So if you took the weight of the airship itself, the weight of the passengers and crew members and the fuel that you want to carry, added all those weights together and divided by 66, that would tell you the number of cubic feet you'd need. The concepts of surface area and volume are important in constructing blimps. It comes down to the basics. There are certain formulas you can use to calculate different shapes. Spheres, cylinders, cubes, the list goes on. And as Dr. Schmidt said, you can look at a complex shaped object, like the blimp, and estimate its shape. You just need a little creativity. Talk about surface area and volume. The Akron Air Dock, constructed in 1929, is the world's largest uninterrupted area under one roof. It's 1,175 feet long. At 325 feet, its width is more than the length of a football field. In fact, seven football fields can fit inside the air dock. You could open its huge doors and slide a 22-story building inside. This huge building was needed to construct some of the largest flying machines ever seen. The rigid airships USS Akron and USS Macon were constructed inside the air dock. Their rigid infrastructure was put together and all other apparatus needed to create the airships was bolted into place. As the 6,500,000 cubic feet of helium was pumped into its gas cells, these 80-ton flying machines floated off the floor. These skyships were to be used by the U.S. Navy as reconnaissance airships for the fleet. They were constructed before aircraft carriers were commonplace in the Navy. They carried over 80 crew and could stay aloft for days at a time and cover thousands of miles without refueling. To extend their reach, small airplanes could be lowered from within the airship and released. They could fly faster and cover a larger territory, then fly back to the airship and be swung aboard like a trapeze artist. Unfortunately, both these giants of the sky crashed into the ocean. The loss of these airships and 76 crew members caused the Navy to rethink the use of rigid airships. After the Akron and Macon went down, no rigid airships were ever constructed in the United States again. <laughs>